Real Life presents the Jack Hibbs Podcast, with intention and boldness to proclaim truth, equip the saints, and impact our culture. You can take Ezekiel 33, 1 through 7, and take the word watchman and put in pastor. If a pastor sees evil coming, and if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, God says, that's awesome. If that pastor doesn't blow the trumpet of warning when evil and Wickedness is coming. I will hold that pastor accountable and all the blood of the people who are shed because he didn't do it and say it, I'm going to require it his hand. That's the age in which we live in. You can get the outlines of this podcast by going to jackhibbs.com slash podcast. Today, if this podcast lifts you up and encourages you to live a more fulfilled life in Christ, then make sure you leave us one of those five-star ratings. To us, that's like saying amen or yes. Then that rating will encourage others to listen. Now open your hearts to what God's Word has to say to you. Here is Jack Hibbs. You're alive and you're living and you are a Christian for such a time as this. Here you are not by accident. For such a time as this, here they come. So what do I mean here they come? Evil, the purveyors of evil. Evil becomes personified here in Esther, in the name or in the life of this man, Haman. Haman is a Agite. He's a descendant of King Agag, of the Amalekites. And isn't it amazing that when we don't obey God, We wind up having to deal with things later on. Listen, the Amalekites, King Saul was supposed, remember this? King Saul was supposed to kill King Agag, an Amalekite, because God said that culture is so corrupt, he's got to be destroyed in all of their culture because they're so polluted, they're so evil, they're so sick. And Saul says to himself, well, we'll save the king and his stuff. The descendants of that sin of King Saul, the eventual birthing of a man named Haman, is the guy that wreaks havoc on the Jewish people, all because of disobedience. And what's remarkable about this is the fact that in every culture of every age, there's going to be a Haman in your life. They're going to stand against you. They're going to fight you. They're going to resist you. And when I say you and, and us, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm talking more specifically about as you and I follow Jesus, they're going to be rejecting the Jesus and the Bible and the God that is at work through us. We need to remember that people can reject us all uh, they want. We, we deserve as humans to be rejected. But when it comes to us saying something that is purely Christ-centered, it's purely The gospel, for example, you can be getting along with everybody, but if you give the gospel, people will hate you in the moment. Why? Because it's a spiritual issue. Man, I tell you, if some of you are doubters, go to some people group or go to a family or a gathering and, and give the gospel, and your doubt should be diminished in the moment because people who were once patting you on the back in five minutes will start grinding their teeth at you, and all you gave them was a pure Bible verse. And that will convince you that this is a spiritual thing we're living in. Evil. Evil is personified in our world today. Evil is finding a place in a home in people's lives and positions of power or influence. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. Woe, the Bible says, be those who call evil good. And good evil. By the way, I'm reading a 2,745 year old verse right now, and it's, it can go on tomorrow's headlines. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. Wise. Woe to those who are experts in their own eyes. That's what, it, that's what the word means. By the way, see the word woe twice. Verse 20, woe, and look at verse 21. Woe. God's not riding a horse. He's making a statement, and it's terrifying. Woe, woe. The word woe is ah in Hebrew. Ah. So I don't know what that means. I understand. In Hebrew, it means this, condemned or damned 
are you? Condemned are you if you say good is evil and evil is good? God's serious. Condemned are you if you put light for darkness and darkness for light? This is what God says. Isn't the Bible relevant? Man, just, you know what? Open it up and let it go. (laughs) It's alive. For such a time as this. Here you stand. We are to stand at this hour. This is an awesome time to be alive. It's an awesome time to be following Jesus. Jesus said in John 16, 33, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. (laughs) Is that awesome? So what's he saying? Jesus said, you follow me, it's going to be a bumpy road. But cheer up. Cheer up. Because I have overcome the world. You say, well, how does that equate to me? I'm glad he overcame the world. What about me? Oh, listen. He overcame the world to let you know that the world has been overcome. That as you walk with him and you stand, you're, it's going to be, you're going to have tribulations and difficulties and troubles. But God is saying, I'm working through this. In fact, you could just look at it this way. Again, it's a continuance of that divine appointment. I can stand. You can stand in the time of trouble because you and I have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this because God's got our back. For that matter, he's got the front. He's got the sides. Look to God's appointments, divine appointments. Look, Look to them. Look for them. So listen, theoretically, hypothetically, you could leave here today, get a flat tire, and you can panic and punch the dash and call up the AAA, chew them out. Or you can pull over and you can say, Lord, I'm going to take this from you. You may not have caused my flat, but I'm going to take it from you that you want to use my flat. So you dial AAA, and the truck comes, and it's already, look, you're already, you're already 50% there. The guy gets out, he has no idea what's about to happen to him. <laughs> said, Dude, I got a flat tire. Yeah, it happens all the time, yep. Well, you know what's funny, because I was just praying that God would use this flat tire. Now look, the guy's down, he's down there, he's, he has to fix your flat. <laughs> You have to stand there to make sure you give him the gospel while he's fixing your flat. So yeah, listen, take your bifocals and go from the broad view down to the the close view, the magnified view, the exact view. Why is the flat? Why? Listen, give that over to the broad view. Dial down. The guy's right there. Tell him. You ever use Uber? When I travel, and, I'm at, and if, if it's for uh, uh, church or business work stuff, I'll use Uber. And those guys, they're sitting ducks. That's how I view Uber. <laughs> Uber is my, hmm. I feel like witnessing. Boop. Yeah, I need an Uber car right here. Those guys, I love those guys. And I don't know what it is, but every time I pull up, it's either Khalid or Muhammad. <laughs> who picks me every time, and I love it because they probably believe in God or gods or something. So the moment I get in, hey, what's your name? Muhammad. Muhammad, nice to meet you. My name's Jack. Do you believe in God? Look, they have to take you to the destination. (laughs) He's stuck. He's stuck. By the way, listen, I got to tell you something. Love on your local Muslim. They are ready to talk about God. You don't have to break the ice, and they need to know about the real Jesus who loves them. And listen, we get into the most wonderful talks, and I got to be honest, I follow up with, because you don't have to tip, but I always follow up with a big tip, because it is a good witness. I just told the guy about Jesus, and and don't blow it by giving him a nickel. (laughs) But it's a captive audience. Look for God's divine appointments regarding these captive audience, and take a stand, and watch what God does. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, not your own strength. Don't do it. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the trickeries, the plots and plans of the devil. 
for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this age and against spiritual hosts of wickedness. Man, that's a lot of dark warfare in the heavenly places. That means we war against dark things that are in the spirit realm. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench, um, what, all, some, what, all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and being watchful to this end. <laughs> be all suited up like this. Say, Jack, where are you going? I'm going to the beach. <laughs> no, seriously, Jack, where are you going? I'm going to church. I'm going to the supermarket. Listen, I'm, I'm going to work. I'm going to the office. The world will say, what are you doing like that? What are you acting like that for? No matter where we go, listen, the moment we wake up, we're in a war. And we need to, we need to have that mind. Always be looking for the divine appointment. Always realizing and understanding, you know what? For such a time as this, you're on guard. It's an awesome way to live. It's an awesome and joyful way to live. Isaiah 41, 13 says, for, listen to this. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Isn't that a great verse? That's awesome, and I love that. Number four, here they fall. Church family, listen up. Evil will not always endure. Evil will not always win. Evil will not always last. There's a day of judgment coming. The Bible says in Psalm 37, 18, the Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. That's you right now. You're not ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish into smoke. They shall vanish away. Evil is going to end. When, when Christ comes, when judgment comes, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 3.11, but the wicked are doomed. Man, listen to this. But the wicked are doomed, for they will get exactly what they deserve. You say, man, that's heavy. You're not kidding, that's heavy. That's very heavy. Haman. Haman, Haman is going to experience his doom. Haman says, I am going to have this. Let's, I'm going to build gallows to hang these Jews on. And I forget the exact number, but one of the gallows he built for, for Mordecai was in his front yard, in Haman's front yard, and I think it was either 66 or 75 feet high. And Haman's like, I'm, I'm going to, that Mordecai, I can just see this by tomorrow. He's going to be swinging in front of my yard. Oh, I can't wait. And the whole thing flipped, and the guy hanging from his own gallows turned out to be Haman in the end. His plot was exposed. God intervened seemingly out of nowhere. Did you know in the book of Esther, God's name on the surface doesn't appear once? But I like what uh, Dr. Ironside says. God's name doesn't appear in the book of Esther, but his hand does. That's so true in life. I love that. Evil's going to fall. God has promised. And number five, we end with this. Number five is here we go. See what do you mean? Look around this world, everything that's going on. Again, don't sit back and be overwhelmed by what's happening. No, the fact of the matter is, with all of these advancements of evil and things going bonker crazy in the world, here we go. Here we go, meaning that God's word is going to be lived out in and through somebody, and I pray it's us right here. Amen. I pray, listen, I sure hope that you're not a spectator Christian. I, I don't see that anywhere in the Bible. But spec, uh, cr listen, Christianity is a non-spectator faith. And I'd love to be able to say, you know what, in a, in a moment, here we go. 
and you get all strapped in, mouthpiece, getting ready, go out there. People are like, where are you going? You're all dressed up for war. Where are you going? Listen, Jesus said in the scriptures, I send you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. Now, background to that, Jesus is there and all the disciples, they, he's been trained, he's been pouring into them. They're his disciples, soon to be apostles. <laughs> all right, you guys ready? We're ready. I'm going to send you out there. Send us. Okay, I'm going to want to cast out demons. Okay. I want you to preach. Yes, we've been watching. All right. So Jesus looks at them. Men, I'm going to send you out there like sheep. Yeah, sheep. Awesome. You're the shepherd. We're the sheep. Woo. Well, I'm not done, Peter. Wait a minute. I'm going to send you guys out like sheep among wolves. Among what? <laughs> Can you imagine? Everybody's tracking until send you out like sheep among wolves. Did he say wolves? Excuse me, Jesus, did you say wolves? Yes, I did. Well, I don't, we don't know if we like that part. No, no, I'm going to send you out like sheep among wolves. Yeah, we still don't like it. And that's exactly what Christianity is. See, yeah, but I don't like that. Kind of vulnerable, isn't it? No, 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 wait. Remember, a few weeks ago, we talked about how sheep have to have a shepherd. Sheep go nowhere without the shepherd. He goes ahead of us. So wherever there's sheep, there's a shepherd nearby, and he has a rod and a staff. And he's got a couple of sheep dogs that will tear a wolf together apart. And what's awesome about this is, we go out into this world, and in the moment you're going to go out, and you're all suited up, kind of weird picture, you're all suited up, but you are a lamb, you are a sheep. And he says, I'm going to send you out there in this world that's like a fill with a bunch of wolves, but you're going to do fantastic because I'm your shepherd. Amen. Keep a tender heart. You love on people who hate you. Remember, none of it's personal. When government rules and decides and does what they do, and when your neighbor does and says what they do, and when, when your friend or family member says and does what they do, it's not personal. We're warring a spiritual warfare. And it's the battle of kingdoms. And God is calling you to move into that kingdom of his and to take a stand. And I want to leave this picture with you. It's kind of goofy, but uh, for me, it's just a great reminder. Going back to Franklin's glasses, it depends on how you use them, it matters. You know, if you lean your head back with those bifocals and try to look ahead, <laughs> it's like looking through the bottom of a Coke bottle. It's not going to work. So we go to Universal Studios when it was open and when it was universally a studio. <laughs> and you know they have the rides there and stuff, and they got that tram ride that takes you through the sets, and then they take you through that little, you know, high-tech tunnel. I mean, that tunnel and the thing, the... Who's the, big, who's the big gorilla? King Kong. King Kong's in there, and Jurassic Park kind of dinosaurs are attacking the train you're on and stuff, and you know that. It's spitting at you. Remember, you get wet. The dinosaurs are spitting, you get wet. So it was a sunny day. I had my sunglasses on, and we get ready. And they gave us the glasses before we got on the train, but we so going around. And we come into this thing. I have my glasses on. And my glasses are very comfortable, so I, and I wear them all the time, so I never, I just, just feels normal. So I go, we go in there, and everyone's going, wah, and they're screaming, and people are ducking up ahead. I can see people moving, and they're flinching, and everyone's laughing, and my family's flinching and laughing, and, and I'm thinking, man, this thing's cheap. <laughs> this ride this ride, this is, I want my money back. <laughs> and I thoroughly a waste. We get out on the other end, and we pull out, and we're driving off to the next thing. I go, that stunk. 
I don't see what the big deal was. And I don't remember who it was in our group said, didn't you have your glasses on? I said, of course I had my glasses on. <laughs> no, didn't you put their glasses on? They handed, when you got on the train, they handed you 3D glasses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm criticizing, I'm, I'm thinking, I, this, this is a bunch of junk and all these people are like a bunch of lemmings. They're all, all <laughs> gullible on this thing together. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and it was like, this is a joke. So I'm cursing the ride. And it turns out that I'm the only one that's not looking through the lens right. I got the wrong glasses on. And people are like that. Oh, that's Jesus Christianity. Oh, that's a bunch of junk. I understand that, but you got the wrong glasses on. You're not looking at it right. And I, I was not looking at it right. King Kong was attacking. I couldn't even see the guy. The dinosaur spitting. We got wet, but I didn't see the thing coming. And I'm like, this is so dumb. <laughs> now, when we got outside, my glasses were great for the sunshine. The 3D ones were nuts. What are you looking through? What are you looking through? It matters. I hope you're looking through the lens that says, for such a time as this, you have been brought to this kingdom of God and this time to be used by God. Bible prophecy is wonderful and fantastic, and so it should be. But application should announce to us, we are living now such a time as this. This Jack Hibbs podcast, as well as all the broadcast outreach opportunities, are listener supported. Will you consider partnering with us through a special gift? Go to jackhibbs.com to learn more and stay connected. Real life and